yeah, I'll be stopped now after our three-hour dinner, and maybe some people went to have some drinks or anything, but, well, I hope everybody's awake now. <coughs> So we are going to, to, June and I are going to, to speak about the amazing world of the Streams API. So what is it? The Streams API is a JavaScript API for the web that enables you to, to do some input output uh, processing. So it allows you to read chunks uh, asynchronously, write chunks asynchronously. You can pipe some, some data from one stream to, to another. You can also do some automatic uh, transformations. And the idea of the API is that it can work with any kind of any kind of chunk. You can, you can I mean, you can stream uh, strings. You can stream array buffers. You can stream potatoes if you want, uh, or basically any kind of GS value cocktail. Actually, we are streaming potatoes in the in the in the tests. Um, so, what can you do with, with the, the Streams API, for example? Um, imagine that you are, you are streaming video, so without, without Streams API, the, the, the idea is that you download the video and then you, you read the video to, to, to play it. With Streams API and uh, media, source, uh, media source extensions, for example, what you can do is that uh, you can plug a stream to the, to the media element and then you, uh, you can download the media um, progressively. Uh, actually in the in the spec of media source extension there's, there's already a, a, an, append buff, an append stream method in the, in the source buffer. So that's already that's already there but it's not implemented yet in some cases. So another use case that you can have is that of, for example um, having a web socket like connection on the HTTP uh, so you can use readable stream and read, uh, readable stream to send and uh, and, uh, and receive messages. Uh, so in, in the case of HTTP2, with Jan, uh, just one uh, TCP connection, you can uh, for both uh, for both channels you can you need only one 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 connection. Um, so basically, it's based it's it's thought for for any input output case. Uh, uh, so you can wrap all the data sources or any, any streams that you have with a, with a clean model, with a defined API. And uh, well, the idea is using it in, to, to, for HTTP, WebRTC, or any file system uh, accesses. So how is the spec now? The spec is stable with readable stream. <coughs> readable, the spec of readable stream is, is Almost stable. There are there's one method which is the pipe, the pipe to one, which is not uh, which is in, still in flux. Actually, it's, in, it's specified in the in the, in the spec. Um, we also have readable stream, which is in beta mode, <coughs> and we also have the, the in experimental mode, the transform stream and readable readable byte array stream that might be merged into into readable stream. So these are the, the uh, so the spec is not is not complete ready and uh, is not uh, complete yet and it's it's changing. So some things that uh, I can say about about the, the API is deeply deeply promise based. So there are promises everywhere in methods that uh, the the um, the API takes in methods. Uh, I mean, some methods of the of the API returns uh, almost all methods return promises. So it's it's very asynchronous, and um, in some cases it can be a bit uh, expensive. So, for example, for for use case, I mean, it's not good to send just one byte at a time. I mean, it's it's tough to send some some you know some stuff together. So the idea of, of course, you can have a Streams API by itself, but the idea is not having 
the streams API only by itself is, is uh, putting it together with other with other APIs. For example, fetch is, is one of them. So in the case of fetch, with the readable streams, you will be able to retrieve and, and send data progressively. It's already it's already in the fetch spec. Uh, I already mentioned before the, the case of media source uh, extensions with that, uh, with that um, append stream uh, method. And uh, there are also some ideas about <coughs> in, in WebRTC. So I need to, to explain a bit about the, um, the API of, of readable stream. So readable stream is, is an object. It's an object that has uh, these, uh, um, these methods and, and uh, attributes. So you have the locked the lock, uh, attribute that tells you if the, the stream is locked by any, by any reader. You also have the cancel, so you can cancel the stream by any reason that you want. You have the get reader, which is going to give you an object of this, uh, of this type. And then you also have the pipe through and the pipe to methods to pipe uh, data to, to other streams. And you also have the T to separate uh, you know, the stream into two branches and to use it uh, in two different branches. Then another relevant object that you can, well, these two, these two objects I would say, the underline, the underline source and, and the strategy. These, these two objects are taken by the constructor of the readable stream and the, the underlying source is the, the source that provides the data to the, to the stream. And it, uh, it has this, uh, this stream, so <coughs> if you construct a readable stream and you pass, it to, you, you pass the underlying source, it needs to have these three methods. The start, uh, pull, and the cancel. The cancel method takes a reason, a cancellation that is going to be uh, returned to the to the users of the of the stream, and then you also have the start and the well, the most important ones are the, the start and the pull. The start is going to be called at, at the end of the you know the, nobody is paying attention. So the start, is, <laughs> the start is, is being is being called at the beginning of the when the when the stream is beginning to produce data, and the pull is going to be called when the when the stream is. Um, is in need to, to, to get more data. And the strategy is, um, is a quite important method because it has this high watermark uh, attribute that uh, specifies how much data the stream is going to, to give. And the size is uh, the method that is going to give you the size of the chunk. So in the case of, of streams, chunk are not measured by bytes or are not uh, measured by the number of chunks that, uh, that you have, but um, the size of the chunk is being calculated with this method of the strategy. So actually there are, there are two, two, two strategies specified in the, in the spec and two built-in objects that you can create, uh, which are the count queuing strategy, which counts the number of chunks that you can have. So, yes, the number of champs, and then you will have the pipe length uh, queuing strategy, which counts the, the bytes inside the chunk. But you could have, you know, whatever, uh, whichever strategy that, that you'd like. Uh, you also have the controller, which is uh, another important object. This controller is taken by these two methods here. The start and the pool. So in, in your uh, underlying, in your underlying source, you are going to receive this controller, which has this these methods. Thank you. Of course, uh, you call that method from your source to, to push uh, data into into the stream. The close uh, the close method in case you don't have any more data to, to push into the stream, you can call the close. In, call, in, in, in case there was any error, you have the, uh, the, error, the error method and also the desired size. <coughs> this, this, uh, method is going, this attribute is going to tell you how much data the stream, is, um, is, is the stream needs. It is related to the, um, to the high watermark 
deeply related because it's basically in the spec specified as the difference between, between the high water mark and the, um, the Q size that you have inside the stream. So when this, um, when this value is positive, it means that you can still push data into, into the stream and when this uh, attribute is negative or, or zero, it means that <coughs> the stream is full and you shouldn't be pushing any more, any more data. And then you have the reader. The reader is returned by this, uh, by this uh, method here of the, of the stream, and it's uh, the, the one that you, are, you can use to, to read data from the, from the stream. And it has uh, a, closed, a closed attribute, which of course is a promise, and it's going to, to be fulfilled when the, when the reader has, has no more data. So when, when, the, when the source closes the... Uh, when the source closes the, the string through the controller, then you're going to, to get this promise fulfilled, and it means that um, there's no more, more data. You can also cancel the string. Of course, you can read data. It's the most important, uh, uh, <coughs> I would say that it's the more important method in a reader. Um, you also have the release lock, because when you get a reader in a readable string, the, str the string gets locked. So if you want to release the, uh, the, the stream to get any more, any more readers, you have to, well, you have to call this method. And here we have some, some examples, maybe it's a bit of uh, uh, well, the font is a bit uh, And we have uh, some kerning issues. <laughs> is it kerning? It's a shit. Well, <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> So I'm going to move here to present this. So let's imagine that we want to create a, a function to, you know, to, read, to create a readable stream and read some data from, from a host and a, and a port. So here we are calling some generic, an imaginary uh, socket that supports uh, back pressure. And then we create a readable stream with an object, because this is the, the whole object, which is the, the source, the underlying source that we're going to pass to the to the to the worst thing. In this case we are not passing any, any strategy. The constructor the constructor will take a source and, and a strategy. But uh, the spec says that that by default the strategy is a current queuing strategy with a with a size of one. So it's going to consider that every chunk has uh, a size of one. So we have these three methods, the start, the pull, and the cancel. The cancel is uh, quite straightforward, so it's going to, when, when, uh, when the spec calls the cancel method, uh, we're going to close the, the, underlying, the underlying socket. Then we have the pull method that is going to make the socket start producing data. And the most important in this case, the, the most complex is the, the, start, the start one. So what it's going to do, it's going to, um, to hook an, uh, an event on the, to hook a, to hook a callback in the, on data. So when there's data produced in that, in that socket, we're going to run this, this code here. And the idea is that uh, when we get uh, some, some data in the, in the event, we're going to, to queue it through the controller that we're getting in the <coughs> parameter. And uh, we're, what we're going to do is that we are going to check if the desired size is, uh, is zero or, or negative. And if, it, if, if it's that, then we're going to stop. We're going to tell the socket to stop producing data. And uh, well, we are also hooking to the um, to the end and uh, to the error. And in the case of uh, that the stream ends uh, or has finished for, uh, producing data, we are going to to close the to close the stream. And in the case of an error, we are going to close the, the well. We are going to error the stream. So what happens when the uh, when we create this thing with this with this uh, source. We're going to call start. We're going to create this uh, <coughs> this uh, <coughs> this event here. So 
we are going to, to start producing data in the, in the stream. We are going to begin in queuing until the desired size is uh, negative of, of or, or, or zero. And in the case we, we reach the, the, this, uh, this position here that we have stopped, then we are going to read data from the stream and then this, this value is going to do, this value is going to change and the, the, the spec is going to call us this method. So we are going to start producing data from the, to push into the stream. Okay. Okay. Uh, some other use cases that, that, that we can have is, for example, we, we spoke about the piping. So imagine that we have a HTTP response body and we pipe it to a transform. Well, we pipe. We can pipe the streams and, and uh, transform the, the, the streams and then pipe it to the to some some. Still in the end. And, and, and this, this example here, the, the most important, uh, is, uh, it shows how to read a, a readable string. <coughs> in this case, we this method is going to read all chunks in the in the, in the readable string, and it's going to push it, to push them into into an array. So the first thing that we do when we receive the readable string is uh, getting a getting a reader. And then we return pump. And pump, what it's going to do is going to call read and uh, try to do something when the when the read also returns a promise. So you can uh, wait until the promise is fulfilled and you get the data. And what you are going to do is uh, in the in the callback, you're going to be passed uh, an object with two with two elements. One is the value and one is the done. Done means that uh, there is there's no more more data in the uh, in the string, so it's going to be closed. So if we are done, we already return the chunks and uh, if we are not done we're going to push the value into into the array uh, into the array and then recourse to pass. Easy. And thanks. So What's the status of the implementations of, of, uh, of stream? In the case of Chrome, uh, what is shipped now is uh, the readable stream tied to the fetch API response. So you can already uh, request a, a, um, a connection, a fetch connection, and the, res the response you can get it like a, like a readable stream. And the, the ongoing work that's happening is that uh, you will be able to create a readable stream with those, you know, with the, through the constructor and, and, and everything. And uh, also they're implementing the, the progressive uploads using fetch. In the case of, in the case of uh, Mozilla, they haven't started implementing it. In the case of Internet Explorer, there was a su uh, support of an earlier version of, of the streams using XHR as, as a producer, so you could create a, an XHR and get a, a readable stream as a, as a response. And in the case of WebKit, we have readable stream fully implemented. We even have the piping operations implemented, but they are supposed to be broken by the, by the spec. Uh, readable stream is also fully implemented. And transform stream, we have a patch in, in Baxilla, but we didn't we didn't uh, land it yet because uh, transform stream is, is, is extremely experimental. Um, well, so I think that's June store now. Okay. Um, so so we we started the implementation uh, last year, and uh, we started with the plus plus because we are thinking we are serious developers. Uh, it turns out to not be true, in fact. So we, we started with a web IDL, uh, so implementing it into web core, so using web IDL. Uh, <coughs> so the initial prototype was kind of okay, it was really um, only supporting byte arrays. Um, we fixed a little bit of the promise binding code, so it, it was mostly okay and we were quite happy uh, when doing that. that 
then we started to uh, actually, uh, so we wanted to strip potatoes and uh, it was a big mess because you need to support an JavaScript value into web core. So you need to add a lot of um, custom, custom code within web core binding in GS. You need to store values, uh, making sure that they are not collectible. Uh, you are calling GS functions asynchronously from its base. Um, so at the end, like in March, uh, or maybe April, the code was kind of okay in terms of uh, features, but uh, it was very difficult to relate it to the specification. So it was not very maintainable. Uh, it, there were issues with reference counting because we had, had, we had a lot of cycles, like when you have a callback, you need to uh, keep a reference so that the object is not uh, uh, remains alive, but then you, you have cycles and all of this. So after some discussions, we started to be funky, and so we went to JavaScript code, actually. Um, so we, we talked with some Apple guys, and they implemented a while ago um, GS built-ins uh, within JavaScript code, which allows you to implement um, um, built-in functions as JavaScript. So what the first thing we did is to enable it into web core because uh, there were some issues and integrate it with uh, web idea. So now at the end of the day, the Spring implement API implementation is only web idea and GS plus some like 80 lines of C++ code that at some point we may be able to uh, remove uh, with automated generated code. Um, it's a bit sad because I was happy with C++, but yeah, that's, that's why. So <coughs> just a little bit of information about JS built-ins for those of you that may be interested in implementing uh, APIs and maybe wanting to mess with JavaScript. Um, so we added just a keyword called JS built-in uh, so that you can actually implement it, so in web ideal, so that you can actually implement this function as um, JavaScript code. So there it's a bit fuzzy, maybe, uh, because it's JavaScript, I don't know. Let me check. No, that's, that's live. Um, so all of this is JavaScript, and at the end, it's calling one function, which is called add get user media there, from JS, which itself is C++. So basically, uh, when you have you, you often need to go to C++, for instance, to access to a, a UI process or uh, sockets and so on. But for wrapper code, uh, sometimes JS code is just good enough. Um, so we added a private keyword there, uh, so that you can actually add um, GS functions in the prototype of objects, but that, that are not visible to uh, user scripts, but are visible to GS built-in. So there, for instance, you see the uh, add, add queue, add queue create offer. So it's a JavaScript object uh, stored in the prototype, as can be seen here. But it's not visible uh, from user scripts, which makes it uh, just perfect. We added some things related to web core, like con conditional compilation. So the JS code, uh, you can actually decide whether to add it or not using add conditional within the GS5, within 5. You can use constructors uh, within, so you can implement uh, constructors as built-in as well. There's add assert, which allows you to do some debug mode kind of stuff. And uh, there are also some um, built-in functions that you can attach to the global object um, automatically. So there are some details there, uh, if someone is interested, uh, probably you, you will publish a slide, so you can go there. Okay. Um, so the overall experience, um, it's much easier to write GS code than to write C++ code. Um, no more crashes, so no more memory leaks, no more red counting <coughs> cycles. Um, preferences is not really an issue. Um, so they made me, so Apple did implemented the whole promise stack, mostly in uh, built-in code, just built-in this year, the change from C++ to GS built-in. And they made measurements, and they even saw some improvements uh, for, for that case. 
So everything is mostly okay, except uh, first there's no GS built in code debugger, so we're back to printf total, which is very cool. Um, uh, <laughs> we also are facing some security issues. Um, so and maybe you can give us some feedback there, but would be really nice if you can uh, have ideas about it. So basically, the GS built-in code is executed in the same environment as user scripts. So you receive um, objects that are coming from the user end. They can be modified. The prototype can be modified. So if you are doing like this, that media devices. Um, Maybe the media devices is a, an attribute property of, um, of this, but maybe the user has changed. Um, so even the prototype there, the then function may be under control of the user. Uh, so it, it can actually monitor it, uh, which is that. But it, it, it can just also change the prototype, whatever. So the GS built-in code may break, which is uh, it's not a security issue, but still it's quite bad because. Uh, if we were implementing that in C++, then it would never uh, break. So that's why we have at in some uh, in most places, um, which is kind of okay, but it's very easy to uh, to be wrong. Um, very yeah. So that that's not that nice there. And the second the second issue is that you can actually uh, since you are implementing uh, a built-in function, you may be you may have uh, some information that should never leak to uh, the user scripts. And the issue is that uh, if you are doing things like that, you are doing a wrapping function uh, within a record type push, for instance, every time that a GS built-in code will call array push, then uh, the user scripts will be able to actually see what is being pushed. Um, so of course what we are doing is using add push, we are trying to make things better, but still it's not that good. And for promises it's even worse when you have chaining, um, you, you really have issues. So for instance, yeah, so this is wrong, this is right for built-in, uh, this is wrong, this is somehow wrong, this is, this is uh, safe but it's unreadable. Uh, <laughs> So somehow, yeah, so we do not have any memory issue, uh, this kind of stuff, but we have like security issues. But we can actually, if we code precisely with JavaScript following the rules, we have solutions for that. <coughs> but it's so easy to make mistakes that um, I'm wondering whether we, uh, we could have a better way of monitoring this, so maybe of making uh, some things like tests so that uh, we, we catch all errors because I think in the Swim API we, we were ca careful so most issues are fixed but there may remain some which is not very good. Um, so we, we can try to improve the situation with a current framework like adding tests, uh, adding a styler, adding sanitizers, proxies, <coughs> we have some ideas there. Or we can also change the infrastructure, meaning uh, like for Chrome, we are able to run JavaScript code, but it's in a different world. So uh, there's no possibility to have security breaches. But then you cannot pass promises objects. So it's a trade-off. Um, so if you have ideas there, we are very welcoming any feedback to, to fix those properly. because. Yeah, the more there will be GS built in code, the more errors like that there will be, which is somehow annoying. So, this is like a conclusion. Uh, so, for Streams API, I think it's maintainable, it's reasonably fast, uh, so that's good. We fix the security issues. Um, we still have some work to improve the GS built in code, so tooling that it's so that it's. Uh, Easily usable. It's mostly very easily usable. Uh, for those of you who, who like to mess with web core binding GS, I would say that maybe you can think about use, using GS built-ins. Uh, that, that would make uh, maybe your life easier. Um, so that's so that's the end of the presentation. I think. Yeah.
Constructor behind, and uh, so we needed we needed a private constructor, and the constructor that can be used uh, from GS, and that is raising an exception in all, all cases. So we need two two, two constructors. That so one is implemented in C plus plus, and the other is uh, implemented in GS. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, there there are also these these things that we need for the Xcode um, uh, dependencies yeah. that we couldn't get rid of yet because of Xcode. We really, we really like that the Apple developers could adopt CMake because that would make our lives much easier and we could also remove some of the that code that is not generated but we tried to generate it at some point and we couldn't do it because of, you know, all those Xcode uh, dependencies and things. So, yeah. 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 Whenever, whenever you add uh, a <coughs> file, you need to update these files, uh, these two files with some C++ lines, and it's very boring. And it could be automated. It was automated at some point, but it was breaking Apple port. So it's it's being removed, um, and tooling is improving. So at some point, this will be automated, automatically generated as well. So we need to push Alex Christensen to finish the uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Any more questions? No? No? Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we don't have one more question for free. The other ones we have to pay, so <laughs> okay.